the MIDI controller. It is the central instrument of any producer's arsenal. Even if you're a dyed-in-the-wool guitar player, like I am, you'll find yourself using the MIDI controller to generate more sounds than any other instrument that you have. And it's because it's so versatile. It can trigger soft synths, it can trigger sample libraries, it can be a piano, it can be a drum set, it can do just about anything. And in this studio, my MIDI controller of choice is the Akai Professional MPK-261. It is one of the most feature-rich MIDI controllers on the market. It features 16 MPC style tabs and a mixer section on the right. And today I'm going to show you how I have it set up in Cubase. Let's go. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another tutorial in Cubase. My name is David and this is my YouTube channel, Talking Leaf Media. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that button because I do all sorts of great tutorials in Cubase in addition to convincing everyone else out there in the world to make music and making music myself. So let's get into this tutorial where I talk about the Akai MPK-261. I'll show you what I use the MPK-261 for in this video. And in order to map it, it is not the easiest works out of the box type thing. I think if you're looking for that, you may want the Native Instruments Complete Control. Those ones are great. This one, you have to work a little bit to get there, but it's worth it in the long run because I tell you what, you can customize everything. You have a lot of faders, a lot of knobs, and the pads are fantastic. And like I said in the intro, it is one of the most feature rich MIDI controllers on the market. But I'll show you how I have mine set up. I basically, in order to set it up, I made the map myself. Now, Akai does provide one. I wasn't too keen on it, so I just made my own generic map. And basically, just the, uh, I needed to map all the quantize functions. And then I mapped these buttons on bank B, because there's three banks in the Akai ecosystem. And the Akai 261, there's three banks. So B is my performance bank. And you can see here, and I'll, I'll see if this works while I'm doing it. So the transport works. You know, play, stop, record. But what I wanted to do was have these buttons be very useful for me while I was playing because I actually have a setup where my monitors and my main screens are here. I have an auxiliary screen here and the MIDI controller. But I like to do that because I know some people like to have the controller and then lean forward and use the mouse. I use the mouse and keyboard so much that if I did it that way, I feel like I would get repetitive strain injury and this sort of twisting to play and then twisting back to use the computer sort of keeps me honest, keeps everything at the appropriate level for my hands, for pronation and supination or whatever the hell they call that stuff. So that's why I have this set up. But I'd like to ha I do like to have a mouse, an extra mouse here on the Akai MPK, as you can see in the shot here by the mixer and I like to have these buttons mapped so the first button I have mapped is uh, the click track and I have to I did these as toggle switches um, the next thing I can change quantize with these next two buttons so you can see up here in the corner uh, 32nd, 64th, 28th, or I can come down to fourth half notes. And being able to do that in a pinch is very nice, especially if you're using auto quantize, which you will be if you're composing a lot in MIDI. It just makes things uh, a little bit easier. So uh, that's the next button is auto quantize, and you'll see that down in the lower left, auto quantize. And then the next, I find these very helpful. I can step back a bar and step forward a bar, and I'll zoom in a little bit for y'all. So those are six and five. And I like these because I can, then that, the seven and eight are set left marker and set right marker. So I can hit left marker. Uh, if I want to set left marker here, go forward four bars, set right marker, and then hit the loop button, and then I can uh, compose a loop. And that's a real time saver. Now, on bank C, I have the quick controls mapped, the track quick controls mapped to these knobs and the VST quick controls mapped to these faders. And I do that by remapping the Cubase preset. And that's an Akai thing that I won't show you today, but they use the main volume uh, CC7 on all these faders. And the problem with that is I don't have A mapped to anything, but we can hear this, no volume. It doesn't matter what fader you use, every fader 
uh, interacts with your MIDI tracks and screws things up. So you do have to remap the actual Cubase preset in the Akai in addition to mapping it in a generic remote from within the software. So there's a double mapping process that you have to sort of wrap your brain around to get the most out of the Akai MPK261. But once you do, you can do basically anything your heart desires. And so these buttons actually, to be honest, they were mapped to CC64, which of course is sustain. I have a sustain pedal down here. But that was problematic when I first tried to map those to these functions. So I actually had to switch in the Akai these to all six CC63 so that these buttons would not trigger the sustain mechanism. And I know this all sounds a little confusing, but if you stick with it and you program it the way you want, you can do it. And if you ever wanted to use a mixer, oh, and let me get in real quick to the one complaint I have about this MIDI controller. I wish that the mixer were on the left and the pads were on the right. Because on bank B, I actually do have, these are my performance controls. So this is expression, this is modulation, this is vibrato if it's in a string library, and then this is main volume. Now these four are sort of the holy trinity and you can do your fader moves. Let me pull up a sample library real quick. Uh, So you can get an expression mapped here, but I wish that they were switched around because then I could use it here and I could use the drum pads here. That would just make more sense ergonomically for me. I know that I'm not the only person, but if that's, uh, if you're listening, Akai, move the mixer to the left, move the pads and the DAW control to the right on the MPK361. So getting into uh, what I have, I have bank B mapped with the buttons as I showed you, and these four things, these all don't do anything. And bank C is the quick controls. Now bank A, I don't have map, but I'll show you if you wanted to map it. I have here, I'll wrap this up. I have the buses for when I'm recording band music, and then that goes out to the main buses of sort of like an instrument, bass, drums, vocals. Those are my main buses and then your mix bus. But let's say I just wanted to be able to use the mixer to control these. I'm on A now and I'll hit F3 to bring up my mixer. And you see, let me just get rid of this. And you see these buses are available. So we go to studio, we go to studio setup. We have our generic remote. And what we'll do is we'll just add I'll just do the first few. And it'll default to the last one, so we'll call this the drum bus. And we want it to be a controller. And we'll learn we'll call this I'll just call this guitars and we'll just do twos just so you can see. We want it to be a controller and well, it's still on learn. So we'll learn that this is the second one. So we come down here to where they are and they're not assigned. You'd assign them to mixer and we want it to be the drum bus. So that should be near the top or near the bottom. Drums and volume, and then we'll assign these guitars as a mixer. We'll call this uh, guitars, and we'll assign this to volume. And once those are assigned, you can see that you can automate these parameters. So if you're the type that likes to ride a vocal or something with a fader, that's easily doable. That's not something I do, but it's doable if you just set up a generic remote and use these controls. So this has been a brief tutorial on how I have my Akai MPK261 set up. I hope you find it useful. If you have, please feel free to hit that subscribe button or slap a like on this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial or the next video. So take care of yourselves. Bye.